Hello everybody, welcome to Open Pepper Breeding. If you're unfamiliar with our work, we're a group of people using social media to breed new varieties of peppers. And we're currently working on pink ahi charpita and pink Brazilian starfish. So this is the 13 week update on the F1 plants. So we're growing these plants to make F2 seed. And then we're going to distribute the F2 seed to our participants. And then we'll go through the selection process in the F2 generation. Uh, today we're just going to be looking at all of the F1 plants and taking a look at the immature fruit. Uh, we have quite a few fruit on all of the crosses. A few of them are a bit further behind, including our Bacatum cross. So this is PA001. This is yellow Brazilian starfish cross to sugar rush peach. Uh, we've been eagerly awaiting fruit development, and I can actually say we do have some immature fruit this week. And there's not much to be said other than the fact that, you know, they're going to be a nice light green fruit and uh, they're going to have the constriction that's present on yellow Brazilian starfish. So we kind of have an intermediate fruit shape here. So let's go in and take a quick look here and I'll show you what the fruit looks like up close and then we'll go look at our other crosses. So there you have it. That's one of the immature fruit here and you can see just right by the tip uh, we've got the beginnings of what it'll be a nice little constriction on it. And there you go. Pretty flowers from a bacatum. Another fruit developing in there. And uh, we'll take a look at the next F1 family now. So this is PA002. So here's Habanata cross to Ahi Charpita and Ahi Charpita cross to Habanata, the two reciprocal directions of the cross. Uh, you can see we're getting pretty good fruit development. Um, the, the round shape and the small size from Ahi Charpita definitely appear to be dominant. And so all the peppers are nice and short, and they've got this rounded squat shape to them. Um, we'll come in and take a closer look here. So these are the fruit from Habanada as the mother. And then these are the fruit with Ahi Charpita as the mother. So even though the fruit from Ahi Charpita look to be a little bit longer and have more of a tapering tip, I'm not sure if that is what you would call an environmental effect or if that's a true genetic effect. Um, traits that are derived from nuclear genes are kind of agnostic of which parent uh, the trait comes from. And uh, the only differences you get in a reciprocal cross would be the chloroplast genome. And I'm not sure the chloroplast genome plays much of a, much of a role in the fruit shape. Anyways, so you can see with these guys, we do have a nice dark green fruit. And uh, they look fairly big. Uh, in comparison to the other, what you would call a half sib, the other families with ahi charpita uh, involved in the cross. So they're taking on the normal chinense shape and we're having, you know, just an abundance of flowers. And so there's still a lot more fruit to be set on these guys. Uh, they weren't the fastest to uh, flower and set fruit, but they definitely weren't the slowest. They're somewhere in the middle. So there you have it. These next plants are PA004, so this would be uh, Shiroroha by SC cross to Ahi Charpita, and uh, it turned out that Shiroroha by SC was heterozygous, so it had one copy of the green trait and it had one copy of the purple leaf trait, and so I decided to take one of each color um, just for my own curiosity here. Um, these were the fastest to flower and set fruit, and so we have an absolute ton of fruit on the underside here that I'll show you. Tilt the plant and get a better view. So you can see we've just, I don't even know, that's a couple dozen fruit that are already well developed in there. So that's kind of a crazy plant. Um, one thing I've been looking at on this particular plant, and I don't know if it'll be the same with all of them, but uh, you can see that the corners here have started to rapidly grow out and kind of left the center a bit bare in spots and so I don't know if that is something that we can select against but that certainly is not uh, the most attractive plant architecture and then this is the green uh, the green segregant and there was something I wanted to show you here so here's some of the fruit setting and uh, if you compare the fruit color back to our crosses with habanada, you'll see that these are light green and habanada was dark green. And it turns out that the light green trait is dominant. And so that's what we're seeing here. So uh, charpita was a dark green fruit 
and it was crossed to a light green. And because it's the dominant trait, we have a light green fruit in the F1. So that'll be interesting. Usually that kind of stuff has an effect on the final uh, mature fruit coloration. And so that might be something beneficial that we could work with to make uh, more attractive fruit. And uh, we'll take a look at the reciprocal. So this is Shira Roja by Ahicharapita. And uh, now we'll take a look at uh, Charapita by Shira Roja by SC. Alright, so this is PA005. This is pretty much the same thing we were just looking at. It's just the reciprocal. And uh, These plants, they, they look fairly similar to the last set. Uh, we haven't quite got that weird architecture uh, going on this plant just yet. Uh, you can see the fruit shapes in here almost identical to what we were just looking at. And, uh, this guy is a bit better of a, a fruit load than the last plant but uh, same color, same shape. So looking forward to those guys ripening up. It shouldn't be uh, much more than a couple weeks here and uh, we'll look at the next F1 family. So this is PA6 and PA7. So this is uh, Fidalgo Roja across to Ahi Charapita over here, and then Ahi Charapita across to Fidalgo Roja. So this is the darkest purple leafed uh, cross that we have. And you can see it's significantly darker than the crosses that are purple from uh, Shira Roja by SC and Ahi Charapita. Uh, this was the slowest to uh, set fruit. And, uh, we're just now having a few fruit that we can look at, so I'll pull you in closer here. All right, so we got one up top. You can see it right there. Let's see if I can get them out from under the stem. And uh, it's about the same fruit shape as what we're seeing with the others. It does have that constriction uh, near the top of the fruit that you can see. I'll point to it there. And uh, that comes from Fidalgo Roja. And so that's a a dominant or a semi-dominant trait and uh, tons of flowers you know it produces pollen well um, the one thing to point out here is that we got almost no fruit on the first and second level and including the third level and so that's really what accounted for uh, the, del the, the delay in uh, setting fruit and uh, just about the same thing with the reciprocal uh, it's behaving the same way with the slow fruit set and development, um, but it is a good pollen producer and it does seem to be perfectly fertile. So uh, we'll see what that looks like in the F2 families, if that's something that's highly detrimental, uh, or perhaps we can find, you know, a selection that does set fruit in the first two, three levels. Anyways, let's take a look at the last F1 here. So this is the last F1 family. This is Ahi Charapita cross to Pink Habanero Long. Uh, this has been about the second slowest to set fruit. Uh, we do have some fruit development going on. So this is going to be another um, dark green fruit. It's kind of got that squat shape to it. And it's a bit longer than the others. And that makes sense because Pink Habanero Long is a large fruit. And that is quite long as well. Uh, the architecture on this plant might be my favorite. Uh, you can see it's nice and compact. It's got a nice canopy of leaves. Um, it's not setting a tremendous number of fruit uh, per node so far. That might be uh, a factor of just not having enough carbohydrate to go around. Uh, too many sinks and not of sources. Uh, but it looks good. Uh, you know the pollen's fertile. It's setting fruit quite easily. And uh, we'll have some mature fruit here uh, in a few weeks to look at. So there you go. That's your 13-week uh, update. And you can see all the plants are happily tucked back in their grow tent. And uh, we'll check up in with them in another couple weeks here. So that's it for this week's update. Uh, if you like the content, uh, please subscribe. Uh, please like the video. And if you could, please share it with other people that would be curious. Um, it helps get our message out to a, a broader audience, both on YouTube and and to external sites. You know, there's a lot of people that are interested in this stuff. It doesn't just have to be Reddit and YouTube. Uh, we'll work with anybody. So thank you guys, and uh, I'll give you another update, hopefully around uh, New Year's. Uh, we'll see what all the festivities do to my timeline. But uh, thank you all for being part of it, and thank you all for watching. Uh, Till next time, farewell.